Well, last week we uh, reminded ourselves that we can draw near to God without fear because of Jesus. This week what we're going to do is take the time to draw near to God again. We've already come home to the Father through the Son and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have received forgiveness of our sins because of what Jesus did on the cross. We believe that He is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and we have confessed Him as our Lord. We've repented of our sin and gone down into the waters of baptism to wash our sins away. So now, what? How do we keep drawing near to God again and again? Well, uh, we're going to use uh, Jesus' own teachings to help us to do that by going through, uh, well, a prayer that he taught us that um, so many of us have memorized and just can say by rote memory, the Lord's Prayer. What we're going to do, though, is we're not going to just say it by uh, rote memory, but take the time to look at what the prayer says, piece by piece, and it helps us to draw near to God each time in the way that, well, makes it so that we'll walk together with God. We're going to start off with the first part, uh, where... Jesus says, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Now, there's two things in that line that I'd like for you to uh, think about and discuss. Uh, I gave you some scriptures here, but I'd like you to talk about two, the two pieces. First, when what do you think of uh, when you consider God as your Father? Is that a positive thing or a negative thing for you? Is that uh, someone you would want to draw near to or not draw near to? And, and why? Uh, why do you have that kind of reaction or that effect to God as Father? The second thing is that uh, it says that God is holy, which means separate, set apart, different than really any of creation. Um, God is infinite and we are not. And so, what do you think of when we say that God is holy, and how does that affect you drawing near to God? Again, there's some passages there, uh, and, uh, and so read those, talk about those questions, and when you're ready to dive deeper into the Lord's Prayer, press play to continue. Well, God is our Father, and God is holy. Not only that, God is King, and we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. As you think about that idea of God being King, how does that affect you drawing near to God? What would you do if you were uh, drawing near to the King of the land where we live right now? How would that affect you? Um, and, and then imagine that the king is your daddy, <laughs> uh, that you live in the palace with dad. How would that affect things as well? You see, uh, God's kingdom here on earth is the church, the body of Christ. And God has work to do to bring God's kingdom here on earth. And we are his subjects. We are his ambassadors. We are uh, a part of his kingdom work. And so my questions for you to consider is, uh, what should we do when we're in the presence of our king, uh, even if that king is our father? And do you have a role in the kingdom to bring kingdom, God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven? And uh, are you living out that role? How are you living it out? There's a lot to talk about there. Some scriptures to read uh, as you consider God as king. When you're ready to go on to the next part of the prayer, press play to continue. Give us today our daily bread. The next part of the prayer is talking about God's provision. And I have a passage there from Jesus that reminds us that when we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, he promises to provide everything that we need to do what he calls us to do. 
God will give us food and shelter and, and, and give us what we need to live, but not just live, but, but live a life filled with purpose, doing what God calls us to do. And so as you uh, take a look at these passages and God's provision, my question is, do you trust God, our Father, to provide everything that you need to live and do what God has called you to do? Uh, and if so, how do you fight off the worry? How do you fight off the things that come into your mind that try to, to get you to stop trusting God to provide? Uh, talk about that with your group. Share with each other uh, tips and tricks on how to fight off worry uh, and instead focus on the work that is in front of you that God has given you to do. Uh, trusting God to provide. When you're ready to go on to the next section, Press play to continue. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or in the original, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It's talking not about money, but about sin. Uh, that when we sin against someone, that we go into debt, we end up owing them. If I steal money from you. I owe you that money back. I go into debt to you. But not only to you, I go into debt to God because God is the one who taught me to not steal. And so forgiveness is, is key to God's kingdom work. And, uh, and because of that, God teaches us uh, very powerful lessons about how important it is that we forgive other people when they sin against us. He even ties it together in this prayer. Forgive us, God, in the same way that we forgive others. Uh, and he even goes on to say, if you don't forgive others, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. You can read the uh, passage in Matthew 18 there, uh, where Jesus teaches us this in a parable. Uh, and makes it very clear. Forgiveness is incredibly important to our walking together with God and being able to draw near to God without fear. So I encourage you to read that and talk about that. Why do you think it is so important? Uh, and, and do you forgive? Uh, and how does that affect your relationship with our Father, whether you do or don't forgive? Talk about that with your group, and when you're ready to go on to the next section, press play to continue. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. He finishes the prayer with this line to let us know that if we allow God to, God will lead us, but we need to be willing to follow. Just like we declare Jesus as Lord so that we would follow him, we need to follow God every day of our lives uh, with each decision that we make. And so uh, our Father will lead us and lead us into ways everlasting, not lead us in ways that the enemy would want us to go, where we turn against God and turn against each other. And so I give you some scriptures there to consider as you think about God leading us in this way. Uh, and then uh, at the end, we have uh, a passage that shows up in our older Bibles, but not in the newer ones. Uh, and that's because it really wasn't in the original, but a, a copyist, someone who was co making copies of the scriptures uh, in ancient days, added this line. And I put it in there because whether it was in the original or not, it's still true. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you uh, uh, finish up your time together, talk about whether you let God lead you uh, and how often you let God lead you. And then I want to encourage you to pray together uh, and pray this prayer the Lord's Prayer. But this time, as you pray it, don't say it quickly and get it over with. Say it slowly and think about what you discussed today. Think about drawing near to God, our Father, 
who is holy, and who is king. And making God's kingdom work your priority in life, trusting him to provide, forgiving us when we fail, and ready to lead us each day. Know that I'm praying with you the same prayer as your fellow worker in the kingdom, your brother in Christ. God bless.